I know it's been a while since we've done a shop update. It's really been an absolutely crazy year. Really, really it's been since things started opening back up last March, we've been incredibly busy on top of all the filming we've been doing. The quantity of swords and the size of the crew here has grown quite a bit. Hey, how you doing? My name is Gadi Jimenez. Uh, I'm the newest member of the shop here at Baltimore Knife and Sword. Um, I joined a few months ago, and since then we've been working on mainly making Damascus, ranging from daggers to uh, multi-bar lamination swords. This one's a really fun one. These pieces on the table here are some of the pieces we've been working on today. These are two Damascus daggers. This one has cast bronze hardware with stabilized wood. Uh, I believe this is maple, and this it has some stock hardware that we have, but fancy it up a bit with some knife wheel work. I can actually take this apart and then sharpen it. Okay, so I gotta take a fair bit of material off. Uh, so I'm gonna take it to the large fader grinders. They just move material a lot faster than the smaller ones do. So I'll be right back. Yeah, we've now been making 60 to 80 different items every week, be it swords or daggers or whatever that mix might be, axes, things like cutlasses, which we make an incredible number of. We've, we've got to go through and create those blades and make all of the pieces. And everybody in the shop kind of has their uh, specific task that they do. But one of the nicest things is that all of the artists that are here can pretty much make anything that's in the shop, even though they may have a specialty. So we do a lot of passing back and forth of parts. So what I'm working on right here is a cutlass guard. Uh, this is one of our mini designs, and they come out as a flat, two-dimensional cutout. We have to basically take it and dish it out on this machine here, which is called a press, it's called a fly press and gives it a nice curvature. If you use a dishing die that's too narrow or too flat, it'll create divots or little cuts in the back of the plate that you don't want in the back of the guard. So I have one here that's like nice and rounded. And then the dish itself actually has to sort of be able to match that shape so you're not pinching the metal in between at an uneven point. It can be something where Rick may be forming the guard but if he's doing five or 10 of those guards and we need some right away, he can hand those off to polishing to somebody else. He doesn't have to follow you know, that single piece all the way through to a finish. Um, and that, that's one of the things that I think separates us from so many other shops like this, is that every single artist here has the ability to make almost everything that we do. As you know, the vast majority of what we're creating here is sold at Renaissance festivals. We're primarily the wholesaler, and we work with various different dealers. Uh, Legacy Forge does a large number of shows that we work with. Um, things that are opening right now, Legacy Forge will be at the Colorado Renaissance Festival, also at the Kentucky Renaissance Festival as that continues. And then upcoming, we'll be opening at Bristol, which is the Wisconsin Renaissance Festival. Uh, and that's a show where we've had a small presence for several years, but uh, the shipment that's going out today is absolutely massive. So if you're near the joust at the Bristol Renaissance Festival, definitely check out the Royal Swordsmiths booth and they'll have a considerable amount of product from us. One of the few upcoming events that we actually do ourselves is we'll be going to Oticon here in DC this year. Uh, our intention is to actually bring a forge with us and do some demonstration, just working through the legalities of that, but that should be uh, quite a bit of fun. But either way, we'll bring a lot of the man-at-arms weapons and we'll be able to show those to you, give you a good feel for the things that we build when we're doing the YouTube stuff. Uh, we'll also maybe even bring some of our regular production for you to see. Well, thank you for staying with us and watching this. It's definitely something we're gonna try and do more often. We'll try and get back to those updates, even if they're fairly simple ones, just to give you a little better idea of what it is that we're doing as we go through this entire season and as we begin to film again for Man at Arms. Click the logo to subscribe or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel or go to Almy and watch Man at Arms.